of God are by destiny children of exploits, designed to thrive where others fail, to conquer the obstacles others fear, and to do the impossible. But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you, you'll need faith to make it a reality. Faith Moments, brought to you by Patrick Fainu Ministries, would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness, and disease. It will enable you to stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Fainu. Blessings of the Lord be upon you wherever you honor the sound of my voice. I bring you greetings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, I pray for this, your precious ones, under the sound of my voice. I pray, O oh Lord, that understanding of your word will increase, bring us to that saving knowledge of your word. I pray that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted by any religious force. Use me, use my mind, my, my body, my vocal cords to your glory. And bless your people, O oh God, in times like this with the blessings from on high. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, let me um, declare to you that it is well with you and your house. It is well with you and your house. If you believe that, say amen. If you are just joining wherever you are on the side of my voice, I welcome you again to Fit Moment. I believe that um, this broadcast will be a blessing to you. It will be a blessing to you. So um, make sure that um, you get the 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 message. All right. You don't 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 get so consumed by you know the um, the antics or the the movement of my body, but just get the message. Very important. Get the message because. Uh, you realize, I believe some of you already realize that uh, uh, we are living in the times that you you need to get closer to God than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Just in case, probably, you know, what's happening hasn't touched you one way or the other. Well, just keep living because uh, it's not the end of it. Okay? Now, when, I, when I, I say stuff like this, um, I'm literally giving you a prophecy. Now, I'm, I'm going to prophesy to you today. <laughs> going to prophesy, you know, to you today. Going to give you the prophecy of Jesus, what Jesus has already prophesied. So it would be, again, um, just stay tuned. Get yourself your Bibles if you're home, um, if you are still at work. And... Um, you cannot pick up your Bibles, just listen and take notes, all right? Um, irrespective of, you know, wherever you find yourself under the sound of my voice, please make sure you take notes and uh, uh, make references to, especially the scriptures um, for your growth and increase. Amen. Okay. Well, today um, I, I want us to, um, you know, uh, um, divert a little bit from the course of what we've been talking about. We've been, you know, talking about um, um, what to do in a time of fear. But um, I believe there is something that is more important than fear that I, um, the Spirit of the Lord is was leading me to um, to bring that to you to gear you uh, to more important things than fear. Because um, when you when you have a, a better understanding of um, where you are, where you're going to be, based on what is to come, uh, fear is not something you will even consider yourself about. All right? <clears throat> fear will not, will not waste its time to... Uh, to try to visit you because you are in the know. You are in the know. Amen. Those who have an understanding of the word cannot be destroyed. The Bible says. Uh, okay. So 
you will be in the know. When you are in the know, you can flow. You can let flow without being afraid of nothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, today I want to um, talk more to you about what's more important than fear. And that is the return of Jesus Christ back. His return. His return. Because everybody seems to be, you know, so concerned. Well, I can understand, you know, why, you know, you're so afraid. And uh, some people will still be afraid. Even after fear is gone, they will still be afraid. Trust me, some people will still be afraid. Even after fear is gone. Because right now, it looks like fear is here visiting everybody. But if you know who you are in Christ based on that which the word of God tells you, you will not even waste your time about fear. All right? You won't even waste your time about fear. I mean, when you I, I, all around, you, you, your people talking, and what comes out of them tells you that, that they are afraid. They're just afraid. Of course, you can understand, you know, being afraid of the unknown. All right? That is why you, when you are in the know, you are not afraid. And so you got to be in the know. You got to be in the know so that fear will not be um, something you need to worry yourself about it because it ain't going to have no effect on you. I hope you understand that. If you do say amen. So I want to talk to you today more something more important than fear. Did I say? I said something more important than fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesus is more important than fear and Jesus is going to come back. So I want us to look at and uh, his return, the signs of his return. Could could it could it even be that what is happening here is part of the signs of his return? Which whether you believe it or not, don't make no difference. Because it is and it shall come to pass. <clears throat> Excuse me, what you are seeing here that you didn't even know that is already there, that is already spoken about, <clears throat> all right, is come to pass. That has shaken a lot of you, your foundation. And so you better take this one as, you know, God loves you so much to give you a hint. Huh? God loves you so much to give you a hint of what is to come with uh, with, with what you are seeing now. Take, take it as a hint. Okay? Now the reason is uh, Jesus said he was going he's going to come he is he's, he has finished his work for mankind and uh, therefore you have a choice to believe and receive him or reject him <clears throat> now when you believe and receive and, and receive him you have everlasting life when you reject him you will not see everlasting life according to John 3:36 but rather the anger of God will continually be upon your head. Well, it's so interesting as to what is happening here. A lot of people going back to the days, you know, of old. Picking up what took place over there and uh, making the prayers out of, out of it. <laughs> uh, I tell you, it's so interesting, huh? If you don't understand this thing here, if you don't understand the word of God, you will be so confused. Yesterday I saw a bunch of people. There's nothing wrong in, you know, calling for a time of prayer. Ain't nothing wrong with it. What's prayer? Prayer is talking to God. And so if you want to, you know, gather together to talk to God, that's fine. But um, your your understanding. I, I mean, the more I look at, the, you know, the current events, the more I see the, in the you know, the, the fact that a lot of people don't really understand the word of God <clears throat> you, you don't understand it you haven't taken your time to get closer to God for you to understand his word for him to reveal himself you know through his word to you so you get yourself so worked up and um, you know um, seeing unusual stuff with people and so, um, again, I want to talk to you about something that's more important than uh, what you have allowed into your life called fear. 
<clears throat> all right so take this one it's more important than fear and that is the fact that Jesus is going to come and if you have been taken by su surprised uh, by this this uh, virus which you and uh, you didn't know was going to come well beloved because you didn't know that it's already in God's word Jesus has even spoken about it I'm going to tell I'm going to we're going to look at it in a few minutes Jesus has already spoken about this virus <laughs> all right uh-huh and how do you know? Because you don't read his word. You don't get into his word. So you're not going to know. And we're going to see that. We're going to see that. It is already spoken about. So take a cue out of it to know more of what else did he say. What else did Jesus say that is going to happen? Is going to come to pass. Including his return. And like I said, that's more important than what you have allowed into your heart to uh, scare you so just imagine that you don't even you are you don't you are not aware <clears throat> you have not put yourself uh, in alignment with <clears throat> uh, the plan of God and the purpose of God through your life on this earth and then Jesus shows up what are you gonna do you're gonna you you go you are now gonna cry out to him Lord forgive me and I, I, I didn't know that well you know now but you just refuse him to receive him. And um, just in case you don't know that, it's going to happen. And Bible tells you and I again, scripture says it. It's going, to, it's going to be like the days of Noah. Well, you were not in the days of Noah. So probably you think that it's just a story. It's not going to happen. Beloved, everything written in this word will come to pass. Everything. So you better you better you, you better fall in line, okay? Activate your faith to receive and believe it. Because it don't even even matter if you reject it. It don't even matter. You will feel the blunt of it. You will feel the blunt of it. Like some of you was just so concerned and afraid. And and you know, showing that you, you know, uh, uh, to that uh, you you are gathering a lot of people and we have to pray and we have to do an all night prayer and all those things. It's an indication that you are afraid. You are afraid. Something has challenged your peace. Something has challenged your peace. That's what it is. Because when you are doing an unusual, just because you see it is some, something that is unusual, because you don't know that it's already spoken of and to come to pass, it's shaking your foundation. You are afraid. It's another form of fear. Well, we're not talking about that today. Again, like I said, we, I want to talk to you of something that's more important than fear. Than fear. If before you were not calling me that we should pray and we should have, um, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, um, Teleton. You know, telephone thing and, and, and everybody, you know, call in. We are going to pray. Don't call me for that now just because there's a virus. You are scared, so you go ahead with your scared business and do that. I talk to God all the time. And he tells me these things that will come. That's the reason why I'm not afraid is because I already know it. Because Jesus is spoken about it. I'm going to talk to you more about this. Beloved, I want you to um, go with me. Come pick up your Bibles if you have it. And um, come with me to uh, see something here very important. All right. I, and then we're just going to start and pick up from here. Romans, the 15th chapter. Romans, the 15th chapter. All right. Let me just read that from the Amplified uh, Version of the Bible. Romans, chapter 15. Open your Bibles and um, let's look at that. Well, it's about time you open your Bibles if you're not one of those who do that. Romans the 15th chapter. Oh, by the way, this is not for everybody. You can refuse to, re you know, receive it. And it's up to you. All right, Romans the 15th chapter. <clears throat> Romans the 15th chapter. I'm hearing somebody was saying that, oh, Jesus came to me. All of a sudden, all everybody is saying something. They are, you, are, you are seeing divine flashes and you say, that's Jesus. He ain't come yet. <laughs> 
Yeah, Jesus came to your room. Jesus ain't come nowhere to your room. Please stop that nonsense. All right. Okay. So here, look at it. Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 4. For whatever was written in earlier times, okay, that the whatever, uh, whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. So that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in his promise. Mm -hmm. Whatever was written in earlier times, which we are refusing to know concerning the word of God and the prophecies. Oh, to those of you who like prophecies, you know, this is a prophecy, just in case you don't know that. For whatever was written earlier times, in the earlier times, was written for our, I want you to underline the word our there because it's for you. Because you didn't know that, now you know. For your instruction, so that through endurance, because a lot of people ain't going to be able to endure all this in here. Through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in his promise. Look at verse 5. Now may the God who gives endurance and who supplies encouragement grant you, grant that you be of the same mind and one another, with one another according to Jesus Christ. According to who? Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. So that with one accord, you may with one voice glorify and praise and honor the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise, praise. Not just go and disturb him with, you know, quoting him on old, old um, uh, scriptures of what took place in the life of uh, the disobedient people. Mm -hmm. Okay? And all that. Sometimes, man, I tell you. Anyway, so um, the, but the important place I want you to just understand that is verse 4. That whatever was written in the earlier times was written for our instructions so that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. We might have hope. When you have hope, when you have hope to know that you can endure this thing here, you fear is not something you worry yourself about or even think about it. So I'm not going to be talking about fear. I'm going to be talking to you more about what's important than fear, and that is the return of Christ, return of Jesus. Now, whether you believe it again, because a lot of people have all I've, I've heard people say that uh, Jesus ain't coming. If he if he will say if he will come, he would have come long time ago. He ain't coming. I've heard some quote unquote preachers say that. I've heard that myself. He ain't coming. Well, keep living and lie. Stop lying. Continue to lie to people so that people themselves who do not read the word of God, okay, they say they're Christians, but they don't read the word of God to hear what God is saying to them just because they've made themselves famous or popular, so you follow them without you checking things for yourself. Beloved, it's not about a crowd and uh, how everybody is going, okay? It's about you knowing because an individual stuff. Now, and so for you to not forget that, that these things were written for us, today and when it was written you were not born but you've come to realize so if you don't grab it and have an understanding of it beloved things will take you by surprise as this virus has been and everybody seemed to be afraid and all that okay now if you think that there's a shortage of food on the shelves of the stores and all that beloved if the producers of food themselves are afraid of a virus and can't even go to work and all that, where are you going to eventually get the food to buy? Well, look at the trend in which things are going. And if you don't understand this, you better start looking, taking, taking a sealer moment, all right, and look through the, the line of things. And like I said, Jesus spoke to you and me about these things already. I want you to come with me to John 
the um, John the the 14 chapter John the 14 chapter and the 27 verse I want us to look at that what Jesus says here John the 14 chapter and the 27 verse Jesus all right says his peace he gives us he leaves us with peace he leaves us he left us with his peace now, if he left us with his peace, why are we then afraid? Well, because the peace that we didn't understand that was left for us has been challenged. And anytime you come to the place of concern, fear, and all that, it means it's an indication that your peace has been challenged. Mm -hmm. Because your peace, peace, your peace is your most valuable asset. Your peace is your most valuable asset. So, when your peace is challenged, then you 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 embrace fear. You embrace fear. If you see, if you remember, when the peace of uh, the disciples with Jesus was was uh, was uh, was challenged uh, on the high seas in a boat, okay, they they were frightened. The Bible said they were frightened, and that that's in Acts um, John the sixth chapter. If you look at the, the 19 verse, you can even see that. But Jesus says, no, don't, don't be afraid. It is me. Don't be afraid. Because their, their peace was challenged. And so they began to be afraid. Now, John the 14th chapter, the 27 verse. I want you to come with me to that place now. <clears throat> John 14, 27. Um, again, I want to read, I want to read um, the Amplified version of the scripture okay <clears throat> john chapter 14 uh the 27th verse and jesus says peace i live with you my perfect peace i give to you not as the world gives not as the world gives do i give to you not as the world gives now i i you are in this world but i don't know what you are getting whether you're getting the peace or you're getting the world's peace the world's peace is trouble basically that's what i'm saying here because right now there's trouble the world ain't giving you nothing well this the world's peace like jesus says the peace i give you i give you it's not like the, the one that the world gives you the world will give you trouble and he says do not let your heart be troubled all right nor let it be afraid do not let your heart be troubled or let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Get the revelation here of what Jesus is saying. Beloved, today I'm saying I am, I am talking to you of something that is more important than fear. And that is Jesus Christ and him returning. Jesus says, my peace, I live with you. Jesus is, has left us with his peace. Now, what we do with the peace he left with us is another thing. So if I have the understanding of his word, that Jesus, I am a child of God. I am a follower or disciple of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has given me his peace. And he has left the earth back to the Father. All right, and he's going to return. And in the course of him leaving, he left me with something. Now, how I maintain that is another thing. Either I believe him, that the peace he has given to me, nothing can overrule that. See, you need to understand this. The last time I checked, God gave Adam everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. He gave him everything. But Adam didn't believe him. So when some, you know, liar came and spoke to him, contrary to what God has said, Adam gave, gave in to lies. Well, I ain't giving in to lies. Because Jesus has left me with peace. He says, my peace, watch, look at it. He says, my perfect peace. His peace is perfect. 
my perfect peace I give to you and not as the world gives do I give you. I don't give you what the world gives you. I give you mine. And he said, therefore, do not let your heart be troubled. Boy, I knew, I hope I knew this thing so, so, so far away. I'm telling you. Do not let your heart be troubled. No, let it be afraid. He says, let my perfect peace calm you. Get that revelation here. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance. Well, including the circumstances of your time you are living in now. And give my peace, let my peace give you courage, boldness, not fear. Let my peace give you the courage and strength for every challenge, he says. For every challenge. Why? Because you're going to have this challenge. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to have challenge in this world. So he says, let my peace, let my peace, let my peace calm you. Now, Jesus was talking, therefore, about his departure from the earth. And so, um, <clears throat> he gave us something that will hold us irrespective of what the world will experience until he comes. And that is his peace. So, I want to remind you that if you don't know this peace Jesus has given, you need to look for it. And you can only find it in Him. You can't find it anywhere else. You can only find it in Jesus Christ. Okay? can only find it in Christ. You know, when, when I see people, you, you need to understand the dispensation and you need to understand the times we are living in. Beloved, God, we are living... See, God again, and, and I want to re say, repeat myself in some of the things I've said earlier those of you who have been following this ministry for some time um can i can attest to this i have said this before god deals with his or with people on the face of this earth by dispensation and by covenant beloved we are living in a, a new covenant we are living in a new covenant we are living in a new covenant. We are living in the dispensation of grace and truth that has come by Jesus Christ. So all looks to Jesus. All ends with Jesus. So if you want to just go and uh, into the, the covenant and the dispensation of the time in which God had with some people, who are no longer with us and bring it to yourself. You are not living in the time of their pestilence and therefore you go and, and be quoting numbers and exodus and all those things of what, what God was dealing with them at the other time. You need to understand the dispensation and the covenant God has with you and I in this time. I hope I'm making some sense to you because God deals with people on the face of the earth by covenant and by dispensation. So we are living not in the covenant and in dispensation of the old. Look at what we read earlier in Romans, the 15th chapter. These things written, it says, whatever things were written before, before were written for our learning, for us to know that there is a way God deals with people on the face of this earth. They were, they were, they, they, their way of dressing was even different than our way of dressing. So how do you then pick up stuff over there? I mean, um, there's, listen, there's nothing wrong with, with, uh, the blood of Jesus. 
all of a sudden you see people uh, you know with, with drawings and art things and all that and somebody you know using a, a paint brush and, br and with a blood say the blood of Jesus on my post door and all beloved these things <laughs> these things are more in your heart okay when your heart fails you finish when your heart fails this we this is we are living in the dispensation of faith not of works faith not of works so you need to understand the difference if not you see what fear will let you do is to do some stupid stuff fear will let you do stupid stuff and I, and it doesn't matter i mean whether you 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 stand in the pulpit so high than everybody else or you stand so low it don't matter because when you don't understand poor understanding of the word of god will let you do stupid stuff period and so you've been wasting a lot of your time getting into the dispensation of the old in your now living and you are not using what what is given to you for the now how do you fight with old outdated equipment and think you're going to win how do you do that look at even the, the the technology of the now they didn't even have it then they did not have the technology you have the technology of the social media to use it to propagate the gospel to reach every corner and you are not even doing it yet you get yourself and you, you are still going into picking up the old accoutrement of the old people to use it in the now how do you think that is going to work you tell me now Jesus said he's coming back. I want you to come with me to Matthew the 24 chapter. Matthew the 24 chapter. I'm doing mine and after that I leave. So whether you want to believe it or not, I have come to realize that you know what? This this scripture here is so true. Because you see Jesus, if you want to talk about prophecy, Jesus has already prophesied all that you are seeing and even what you are going to see. Jesus has already prophesied about it. So I will, sometimes I hear, you know, people, I see people, you know, showing somebody. No, when you take what Jesus has said, put it in a book form and make it yours, beloved, you haven't done anything, especially to some of us who know what Jesus has already spoken of. I mean, the master himself, prophet of all prophets have already spoken prophet of all prophets he's already spoken these things um what did i say matthew what the 24th chapter yes now jesus has already spoken that he's going to be leaving and therefore he said i'm leaving you with my peace my perfect peace, not the peace that the world gives you. The God, the world ain't got any better peace to give you. And right now, the world is not giving you no peace. Okay, you ain't getting no peace now, is it? Now, so Jesus says, "I leave you with my peace." Now, um, I want you to uh, turn your Bibles with me to um, Matthew the twenty-four chapter. I want us to look into some various scriptures here, beloved. Take your time. And as always, as a reminder, take your time and read. We're not going to read the whole chapter, but you read the entire chapter. You do that. Now, um, Jesus says, what's, let's see here, uh, verse, um, let's pick up from verse, 20, verse 1, okay? And quickly run through this. Jesus left the temple area, okay, with the disciples at that time. I, the, the whole picture I'm picking just leading you to about um, his departure and his return. That's what we're talking about today, that Jesus is going to come back. Now, how prepared are you to receive him or to look into his eyes? That's more important than your current state of fear, because if you think, if you, you think this, this virus 
has come to put some fear and concern in your in your mind well i'm i'm here to throw a bigger picture to you of when you don't know when jesus is coming you don't know when he's going to come no you don't do you no you don't and don't believe anybody who said he's coming today or tomorrow we have said we have we have even had you know I mean, I think I was probably, I don't know, in my in my teens when I heard that the end of the world is coming because something happened. Mm -mm. I have grown to realize, to get some sense in my head to realize that that's not true when people say, the, the, you, know, uh, you know, the scientist says that we, we're going to be extinct in the next 10 years. That's, that's bull crap. The scientists right now don't even have, you know, a vaccine for this virus. They don't even have it now. They don't. Much more to come and tell me that the the, the, earth, the 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 world is going to come to an end in uh, in in ten years from now. You crazy! Most of the time, you look at the scientists; their head, you see that they, they don't even have a correct head. Crazy! I'll tell you, nobody knows that, and I'm a, I'm gonna prove it to you. Cause see, I pr I go by the word of God, which will never pass away. Nothing will come to contradict this. Nothing. Jesus left the temple area, verse 21, verse 1, <laughs> chapter 24, verse 1 of, of Matthew. Jesus left the temple area and was going on his way when the, his disciples came up to him and called his attention to the magnificent uh, and the massive buildings of the temple. And uh, he said to them, do you see all these things? I sure and most solemnly said to you, not one stone here will be left on another which will not be torn down. And while Jesus was seated on the temple, on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him again, to him privately and said, tell us, when will this destruction of the temple take place? And what's this now? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of age. Three things that they asked him. Three things. Number one, Tell us, they said, when will this destructive things take place, as you, you are saying? Number two, what will be the sign of your coming after you have returned? And number three, what is the sign of the end of age? Now, we're going to see the response in which Jesus gave to these people at a time for which it's written for us to also know watch this verse 4 Jesus answered them and says rather be careful that no one mislead you deceiving you and leading you into error for many will come in my name misusing my name and appropriating the strength of my name mm -hmm. okay the strength of my name which belongs to me alone saying I am the Christ the Messiah they anointed and they will mislead many they will mislead many see right now people are all over in their homes you know you have to stay home don't go out da, 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 da. very soon it will come to a time where you're going to be hearing oh Christ Jesus has come he is in that area because you are so afraid and you have lived a life of fear for some time now you don't even know it's like you are probably hungry there's no food and all that things in here, we're going to be looking at some serious stuff, beloved, because it is going to happen. Now, I told you I'm going to give you a prophecy that has already been said. It's already, it's already said. The Christ, he says, be careful. Someone will come and says that uh, for many will come, verse 5, in my name, misusing my name, and appropriating the strength of my name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, and they will mislead many. Now watch this, what do you continue to say? Watch this now. Jesus continued to say that you will continually hear, you will continually hear of wars and rumors of wars. You will continually hear war and rumors of war. See! That you are not frightened or you are not afraid. For those things must take place. But that is not yet the end of 
age. So Jesus gave an answer here. These things must take place, but that is not the end of age. Now, Matthew's account here is giving us something interesting. Then Jesus continued to say this, For nation will rise against nation, nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be farming and earthquakes, pestilence in various places. Farming, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. Jesus said that. Now, I know of farming. Farming, what is farming? It's a scarcity and, uh, and, um, and um, scarcity of food. That's farming. Look in your dictionary. I mean, I took my time, all right, and then look into this thing called farming. What is farming? Jesus spoke of farming. Okay, so I took my time and I want you to do the same thing. What is farming? Let me just do this thing again here. What is farming? <sighs> Watch this now. When I look at the, the definition of farming, just in case maybe I wasn't too sleepy and uh, I was seeing things. Okay. Now, my definition here, okay, definition here, it says, farming is a widespread scarcity of food caused by several factors including war huh farming is a widespread scarcity of food <laughs> caused by several factors including war now you see jesus mentioned war and rumors of war there's a there's a outbreak of war now that is causing a lot of food and the shelves of food shelves in the stores to be empty i hope you already get in the picture here and it says the the, the definition here continue to say that um inflation crop failure population imbalance or government policies government policies government policies which one is stay home now government policies can cause famine i didn't know that it says watch this now this this phenomenon is usually accompanied or followed by regional malnutrition starvation epidemic and increased mortality epidemic so that is the definition when i check farming as jesus mentioned jesus says watch this now look at verse 7 he says nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines plural in other words Different ones and a couple of them. And earthquakes in various places. Pestilence. Now, let's look at the meaning of pestilence too. So we here we see epidemic. An epidemic. Farming is farming is a widespread of scarcity of food caused by several factors, including war. Scarcity of food. And if you're one of those people who have gone to the shopping, the food malls or the shopping centers and you realize that the shelves are empty, just imagine what is to come. Mm -hmm. Okay? I said, take a cue 
of what is happening here. Jesus will come back. If you don't believe it, you don't have to. Nobody is forcing you to believe. Listen, I've come to the I've come to realize that you cannot force nobody to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not for everybody. Boy, I just I just thank God for something I don't want to say. You can't. So it don't make no difference. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it. A lot of people didn't believe when, when Noah was tell, was telling them about what God had said. They didn't believe him. But when the time came. Guess who was crying out to be saved? Guess who? And Jesus is giving us that picture of what took place that is going to be like that in our time. So just keep living with your own belief self. You don't make no difference at this point. When 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 this on on uh, unannounced virus just came, you 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 it's caught your attention, ain't it? You better draw to draw to Jesus faster than you have ever even thought or and imagined. Now, Jesus also spoke about pestilence. So let's look at what pestilence is. Um, pestilence. Now, it's a fatal epidemic disease, especially the bubonic plague. <laughs> oh my 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 this is from the uh, the Miriam Webster dictionary it says it's a contagious or effect infectious epidemic disease it's an epidemic disease epidemic now remember when they were saying you know, it's an epidemic. There's an epidemic. There, you know, a coronavirus is epidemic. Epidemic disease. That's what pestilence is. And Jesus mentioned this. If you also look at um, uh, Luke 21, you're going to see that as well. So here, uh, uh, Jesus is saying these things. He's already, if you want, if you will, he's already prophesied. So when you hear somebody saying these things here, uh, please, uh, it, it becomes something new to you because you don't know the word of God. That's why it becomes new to you. You don't know the word of God. And that's why you need to know the word of God. That is why, beloved, as believers, since we are to get this gospel to every nation, Join me to get this one million plus Bibles into their hands. Bibles, Bibles, the word of God that we are using now, so that they people will know the word and not perish. Team up with me, let's do this. So Jesus says, and watch this. He says, There will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning. Get that revelation here. Because first of all, he says, you will continually hear wars. Things that will happen to cause a scarcity of food. Look at what has just taken place. And look at the, the, the food markets. Foods are all, all gone. Jesus says, but all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs, which is the intolerable anguish and the time of unprecedented trouble. A time of unprecedented trouble. Okay? He continued to say a couple more things that I want you to please go in, into the Word and read. Among some of the things... Let me quickly run through some of the things. It says there, there's going to be lawlessness. Lawlessness. If there's going to be, I mean, my 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 uh, sister was telling me that uh, she went to, you know, the, the shopping mall. She has never seen lines. Lines. A wholesale place. And they have never seen lines. And I saw that myself on the television. Lines, people, lines, just lines across the whole, you know, wholesale building. Lines. 
lawlessness that to the fact that they some started fighting each other and all that and then the police have to come in to cause to just get things in order lawlessness is going to happen false prophets will appear oh well i hope you are still living they're all over the place false prophets all over the place he says they will appear um many will be offended then repelled many will be offended oh boy today you don't even know what's happening i'm this this things i'm seeing it it's like wow bible is really unfolding right in front of my eyes the word of god is unfolding right in my face wow wow he says many will the love of many will even wax cold the love of many will wax cold <laughs> Woo, lord have mercy the love of people will wax cold he says and on and on and on and on now if you look at this perilous times, I'm not talking about the rapture here today. We will come back, we'll come to that aspect of it, since I'm talk we're talking about the return of Christ, which is more important than fear. We're going to be looking at some more details in this area as Jesus was giving this vivid picture. false Christ and false prophets will appear they will, they will even pro, pro, provide it says they will provide signs and great wonders as to deceive if possible even God's elect get that revelation here and that time is, is some serious time you think we've seen some serious time we ain't even seen seen none of it half of it yet okay now Come to me, um, let me show you the fact that nobody knows since you think that, uh, you know, when you receive all this nonsense from, you know, people saying about, uh, you know, we, we, we have to, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the world is coming to an end in 10 years and, 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 and all this, and all this, please, okay? Well, come, uh, look at verse 36, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's pick it from verse 35. 35 look at it please take your time and read on i'm just not going to be able to read everything here for you i need to make my point look at it verse 35 heaven and earth as as now known will pass away but my words will not pass away get that revelation here and please circle this and let this sink into your faculties the words of jesus the prophecy of Jesus will never pass away. It will come to pass. You get that? So if you have never heard this from Jesus, well, I'm helping you to hear it, and you need to go now, therefore, and search and fish out what Jesus has said. Now, you realize that this is from the dispensation of grace and truth that came by Jesus in which we are living in. We are living in the in the in the time of grace. We are not living in the time of the law. So don't go and pick things of the law and try to plug them into this dispensation of grace and truth. I hope you are getting the revelation here. So watch this. Jesus says, "Heaven and earth, okay, will pass away, but my words." My words will not pass away. Then again, he says in verse 36, But of the exact day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son in his humanity, but the Father alone knows it. And he's making reference to the time of his return. No one knows that. Did you know that there's anything called coronavirus was going to come and around this time? You will have put your house in order. You probably, I mean, the government will have probably stuck up a lot of food 
and that the shelves will not of the supermarkets will not be empty. And so is the Son of Man. Nobody knows when he's going to come. You better get yourself ready, y'all. <laughs> but as the time, exact time, and day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels, he says. And these are the words of Jesus, which he says that his words will never pass away. For, this, for the coming of the Son of Man, the Messiah, will be just like the days of Noah. So go and make a reference to the days of Noah, what was happening. Listen to what he says. For, this, for the coming of the Son of Man, Jesus, the Messiah, will be just like the days of Noah. What are those days look like? For us in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Until the very day when Noah entered the ark and it was all over. And they did, they did not know or understand until the flood, flood came and swept them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be unexpected judgment. Unexpected. So if you are playing church... If, a, if you say you're a Christian and playing church and thinking that we got a lot of time and all that, unexpected, the Bible says, Jesus says that. Unexpected. So this, what is happening here should give you just a little bit, a teeny little cue of what is coming. Okay? Just to give you a little, little, little teeny bit of what is to come. Today, I just wanted to... Um, Get out of this messages of fear and all that. Listen, you you can preach. I can preach about and teach about fear not and fear not and give you a whole bunch of scriptures. Even after this 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 atmosphere passes away, a lot of people will still be afraid. The important thing here is for you to know the word of God, what Jesus has said, what the word of God tells you and I. And how to prepare yourself. First you need to receive Jesus Christ. As your Lord and your Savior. Because you see I'm going to show you that not today my time is gone. We're going to see that he's coming for his own. Not everybody belongs to him. If you have not received him and accepted him as your Lord and Savior. He ain't coming for. He, he has already come for everybody. He's already come. That's what he died for everybody. So now your choice of believing and receiving him as your Lord and Savior positions you for those who he's coming for. That's the difference. If your preacher is telling you that he's coming for everybody, he lying to he lying from the pit of hell to you that he's coming for everybody, he's coming for everybody. To them that receive him, those are the ones who have given the right to be called the sons or the children of God. So you need to know your, you need to know the word of God. Beloved, be ready for his coming. Be ready for his coming. All right, be ready for his coming. Look at, look at verse 42 of still, we're still in Matthew, the 24th chapter. All right, I'm going to close here. Look at verse 42. So be alert. Give strict attention, be cautious and active in faith. Be active in faith, not in fear. Be active in faith. For you do not know which day, whether near or far, your Lord is coming. You don't know. You don't know. And since you don't know, you better start thinking and living your life like there is indeed Tomorrow, why? Because he is going to come. Now you can choose to believe or choose to reject it. Don't make no difference to somebody like me. No, make no difference. No, make no difference. Mm -mm. You can choose to believe or you can choose to, to reject it. But let me just remind you of when you reject him. Come with me to John chapter, chapter 3. John chapter 3. Let me just tell you what will happen to you. <laughs> and I believe the word. John chapter 3, 
Look at verse um look at verse 36. <clears throat> look at verse 36. He who believes and trusts in the Son, huh? The Son of Man who is going to become who the Son Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, glory be to God. He who believes and trusts in the Son and accepts him as Savior has eternal life. And that is you already possess it by receiving him as your Lord and Savior, believing in him and receiving him. But he who does not believe the Son and chooses to reject him, disobeys him and deny him as Savior, will not see eternal life, but instead the anger of God hangs over you continually, continually. So you, if you think Jesus, when he comes, he's going to come, you know, with your un, unbelieving self. Well, beloved, think again. No. He already has come, and, and the sinful man, the hostility of sinners against him is over. Ain't going to happen anymore. Jesus is not going to come to die again. He's come to take us who have received and believe him and his finished work concerning us to reconcile us back to the Father, the originator. Glory be to God. He is coming for us. And so you better be in that place. You see, you see, if if you are not you are the place of not being afraid of this current dispensation or even concern because of what you know. Let the worst come. You will not be afraid. You will not be concerned. You just know, just you know, you just know that you just know that he is able to take care of you. He is able. Glory be to God. However, however he's going to take care of you, he is able to do that. More than you can even act, think or even imagine. So if you don't receive him, the anger of God, will continually be hanging over your head. Do you want that? And if you don't receive Jesus today, make him your Lord and your Savior. You know, let God know that you appreciate what he sent Jesus to come and do for you. And that is to die. The legal aspect of the covenant. Covenant is a legal term. Covenant is an agreement between two or more people. And the covenant God has with human beings on the face of the earth after the sin caused by Adam is that we therefore receive Jesus because we need to pay a price for that sinful sinfulness that Jesus has come to pay that price for you and I. And so we need to receive him. Now how much more can you ask of God? He's done this for you. Receive him. Believe and receive him. Thank him for sending Jesus. And have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because now God does not see you, the believer, as a sinner anymore. Because he sees you through Jesus Christ. But if you are outside Jesus, you don't have a right standing with him. Your righteousness is through Christ. It's no more, beloved, listen, it's no more, no more, you know, being clean without Christ, basically. No. That's why Jesus is the only mediator now. See, before Jesus, since you don't know, you don't believe what I'm saying, before Jesus, it was Moses in those days and the dispensation and the covenant in which God made with those people in which you go and pick up stuff from them to live your, your today's life, beloved, you, you get so mixed up and confused. It was Moses who was the mediator between God and the people. In our dispensation and the covenant and the time God has made with us today is Jesus who is the mediator between he, God, and man. So you better receive Jesus and let God see you the way you ought to be seen. And this way also, 
you have a clear understanding of the word which will never pass away. Jesus says, my words will never pass away, will not pass away. And the words of Jesus that he has spoken to, he said, you will see wars and, and you hear and you wars and rumors of wars. Earthquakes, pestilence, which is diseases like the one you are seeing now and all those things will, will come. Jesus has said it. So you, you, you are not afraid because he says, don't be afraid. Why? Because you have believed and received him. So his spirit now, glory be to God, lives in you that you are you have an antidote against all, all and even those ones that is coming you don't even know. Do you know what is coming? You is giving us just a cue. You, didn't, you never thought of, it doesn't matter which name they give to whatever the pestilence is. Like this one, they've given it a name, what, coronavirus. Well, tomorrow is going to be, you know, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 I almost use, Grace, I almost use your name. <laughs> Liz Grace. <laughs> tomorrow is going to be anything. It could be Patrick, whatever, minus me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Got to inject, inject in some, you know, some fun time. Amen. You don't know what's coming. So it don't matter whichever situation it is. It don't matter. Jesus says, it doesn't matter whatever the circumstances it may be. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't have to worry yourself about any circumstance. Whatever way it comes. As long as you are in him, as long as you've made him your Lord and Savior, you have, you have received him, you have invited him into your heart and in your life, and he's living with you and inside you, glory be to God. You don't have nothing to worry. And that's why you need to give your life to Jesus today. And if you're already thinking about doing that right, I want to pray with you. Say, Lord Jesus, say it. You, you, you know what you said? See, you are saying by faith, believing in your heart. Believe it in your heart. That's what scripture says. Romans chapter chapter 10. Look at uh, verse 9 first. Let, 10 to, 10 to, you know, if you can write it down if you don't have your Bibles. I, want, I mean, I want you to see it yourself. Look at Romans chapter 10. Okay? Look at Romans chapter 10. Look at verse, verse 9. Okay? Verse 9 and 10. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth, if you acknowledge, acknowledge who Jesus, and you confess him with your mouth, confess that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, his authority, and the majesty of God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Beloved, so we're talking about, you know, conf believing in your heart that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. Receive him. You see, right now it's a hard, it's a hard work. It's not like the dispensation of works by Moses in his time. This is a different dispensation we are living in. It's a time of faith. It's not a time of year. If you believe him in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So that should be your confession. And look at verse 10. It says, For with the heart, a person believes in Christ as Savior. In, with your heart. You are resulting in his justification that he is being made righteous. All right? Being freed of the guilt of sin and made accept acceptable to God. And with your mouth, okay, you acknowledge again and you confess by your faith, your faith activating, openly resulting and confirming your salvation. So it's all about your salvation for which Jesus came to die for humanity. And that is what he says, you who have received me, go into all the nations of the world and preach this gospel of salvation. Jesus is grace. He is grace. But what he asks us to go and preach is when you have received grace, take the him, the grace, 
to go and remind people or tell people that grace has come. Glory be to God. Man, I feel like I want to just take this to another level. Grace has come to save you. So receive him. And as many as receive him, to them have the right. Oh, glory be to God. To them have the right to be called the sons of God, the children of God. And when he's come, he's coming for his own. Not for anybody, not for everybody this time. He's, he's already done for everybody once already. This time, for those who believe and have received him. So do that right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this message. I believe you in my heart. Come into my life. Jesus, I need you. I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I receive you into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. From this day forth, Lord Jesus, baptize me with your spirit. That your spirit will live in me and dwell with me. So that I may live to fulfill the purpose of God for my life on this earth. That when you come, I will be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. And amen. If you sincerely pray that prayer, all right, and receive Jesus. Beloved, in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus says, you should be born again. In other words, receiving him, you have a spiritual transformation. You have been renewed. Okay? You are being renewed. You're no longer the same. God don't see you the same as men will see you. That's why it doesn't matter how what people think of you. It don't matter. Because if you're going to live your life thinking of what people think of you, you ain't going to amount to nothing. I hope you're understanding. So make sure that you have taken this thing seriously and uh, don't stop right there. You need to get the word. Jesus said, my words will not pass. The word. Don't let people deceive you. Don't let people lie to you about all that. Get his word because Jesus has already said it. Remember we read it. He says many will come and they will deceive you. They will use my name. They will misuse my name. They will use the power of my name. There's a power in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. They will do, don't allow people to. So you get the word. Beloved, this is why I want you to join me. Okay, be a financial partner for, for us to get more of the, we're talking about one million plus Bibles, the word of God into the hands of people. Join me, listen, you may, maybe, maybe you don't, you feel like, well, it's another way of getting money. No, 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 no. If you don't want to send the money, don't send it. You get the Bibles yourself. Let's team up and send it to the world. How's that? Just for you to know that we ain't here looking for your, your your money. Right now, a lot of people have money in their pocket. They can't get food to buy. Money is not everything, y'all. It is okay if you have it to take care of whatever. So don't have these funny ideas. This is one of the reasons I told God I don't do this. Because <laughs> I don't like that, that feeling. But join us. Let's do this together. Let's do it together because you see, as those Bibles go, so are you also going, taking the word of God. It's because it's the word of God. It's the word of God that you are sending. As Jesus said in Matthew 28, the, the, the 19th verse, he says, go into all the nations and make disciples. We are now the disciples, the followers, the believers of Christ. Go and reproduce. Tell everybody what I've come to do. Let them see this yourself. So when we talk to them, we give, we leave them with the word so that they can see. They can see. That's the whole reason we're doing this. So team up, partner with me today. Let's do this. On your screen, you see Vision 2020, 1 million Bibles distribution. 1 million. I think we need to enlarge the, the, the font here and put this stuff, donate also yesterday, we forgot. And let, one million plus Bibles. All right? Let's do that. I want to hear. You You can use your cash app or your Zelle. Or go to the, 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 the website and use your PayPal account. Okay? Or your bank card. 
click on the word says donate and follow the rest of the instruction let me hear from you today we need to we need listen people need the word remember what jesus says he says man shall not live by bread alone not by food alone the word is enough to to fill your spiritual being to manifest in the physical so let's get this word into the hands of one million plus people all over the world would you join me today to do that i thank you for doing it now if you have just received jesus as your lord and your savior the next thing i want you to do is to look for um a place of fellowship right now i don't know which country you are some of some countries are in lockdown you you can't even go to the place of of um of worship okay and so still look for you know friends people you know in who are believers okay who are believers lord boy are we coming into the days of oh, into the days of uh, of old with jesus and the disciples the bible said they, they were meeting now they, they, oh boy that i feel like i, I want to talk about this one they were meeting in in homes and that was even strengthening their faith oh i miss the days of cell groups home cells it's coming now god knows what he's doing now i'm telling you and so make sure you look for one and um introduce yourself okay and um let them baptize you whoever is is you know uh the head of um, or the leader and that tell them you need to be baptized in water okay they can baptize you in the home don't have to go to the sea to be baptized. You can be baptized, you know. Just, you know, they'll know what to do. Make sure you do that. Now, don't forget to join me this and um, every day, Monday through Friday, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here in the United States, 10. So connect your time, all right? Look at the time difference. Maybe you are in India now, or you are in, in Pakistan, or you are in Egypt, or you are in Africa somewhere, or, or you know South America somewhere, wherever you may be, look at your time and connect it with you know, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here in the United States. Make sure you share this broadcast. Okay, share it, share it, share it. I am, I am asking you to share because people need to hear. I'm not telling you that Jesus walked into my bedroom yesterday to tell me this. I'm seeing it. And you need to see that. Jesus has already said it. So a lot of people are going to be deceiving you. You better you better shine your eyes. Like my little boy used to come from school and say, shine your eyes. Because Jesus has said it. People are going to come and they said, well, I am the Christ or I saw Christ or I did this, this and all that. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. A whole bunch of stuff whole bunch of stuff so please check this all right make sure that you you stay the course read your word and join me and then share the broadcast to everybody let everybody be blessed as well well i'm going to leave you here for today god bless you may he continue to bless you you are still living in his blessing giving you enough time for you to get your act together get yourself in alignment so that you will not be left behind okay and don't believe this hype of uh you know when god comes and take people uh, his people out and those who are left behind what to do there ain't nothing there you get yourself in and don't not talking about you know as a, a, a second second op uh, option of what to do well you better do whatever you have to do now to get in when he comes because he is coming and that's more to talk about, that's more of importance to talk about than to talk about fear. And that's it for the day. And that's why I tell you all the time, you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Don't live in fear. Live in faith. God bless you.